Hi, I'm Martin Aguinis from the Flutter team here at Google. And this is the first video in a series about Flutter widgets. This series will cover stateless widgets, stateful widgets, inherited widgets, and keys. Today, I'm going to show you what a Flutter widget is and how to put stateless widgets to work in a Flutter app. If you haven't used Flutter before, it's Google's mobile app SDK that builds native iOS and Android apps from a single code base. It's also super fun to code with, so let's jump right in. To keep things quick, I'm starting with a basic app here. It has a scaffold widget, an app bar widget, and a couple text widgets that display info about my yellow Labrador, Rocky. Widgets are the basic building blocks of a Flutter app. Each one is an immutable declaration of part of user interface. And they can do a lot of things. There are structural elements, like a button or menu, stylistic elements that propagate a font or color scheme, layout-related widgets like padding, and much more. You can also compose new widgets out of existing ones, too. So the combinations are endless. Let me hop into an editor, and I'll show you what I mean. Say I wanted a background color on my dog's name. I can do that by wrapping the text widget with a decorated box. And now my text widget has a background color. Maybe I'd like a little padding in between the edge of the color and my text, though. I can do that by adding a padding widget in between them. I'll give it eight logical pixels of padding all the way around. And now I've got a little bit of padding. This process of putting widgets together is what we call composition. I'm composing my interface by combining a bunch of simple widgets, each of which handle one particular job. Padding pads things, decorated box decorates a box, and so on. Now, let's say I go to the animal shelter and I meet a couple more yellow labs that I cannot live without. I can add a column widget inside the center widget and then make some more of these names. I can even use a widget called size box to put a little blank space in between them. That gets me something like this. But you know, I've got a lot of repeated code here in these three named boxes. Wouldn't it be great if I could make my own widget that just took a string and handled the details for me? Well, I can. I'll make a stateless widget and call it dog name. A stateless widget is a widget that's composed of children, which is why it has a build method, and does not have any mutable state that it needs to track. When I say mutable state, I mean any properties that will change over time, like a text box would have a string that the user updates, for example, or a widget that's animated might have values that change. This one doesn't have any of that. It just needs a string for a name, which won't change. So stateless widget is a perfect fit. I can even make this string final. I can take that string in via the constructor. And because all the properties are final, I can mark this a const constructor. Now, I just need to fill in the build method with the same widgets I was using above. Only this time, the text widget will display the string from the widget's named property. Now I can use this widget to simplify the code I had to start with. As you can see, I still get the same interface here, but my code's gotten a lot tighter thanks to stateless widget and Flutter's use of composition. So that's a little example of how composing with stateless widgets works. At this point, you might be asking yourself, you know, I see how these build methods work, but when do they get called? Well, let's start with just a single dog name widget. We tend to think of apps built with Flutter as a tree of widgets, and that's not a bad thing. But as mentioned at the beginning of this video, widgets are really just configurations for pieces of an app's UI. They're blueprints. So what are the configurations for? Elements. An element is a widget that's been made real and mounted on screen. And it's the element tree that represents what's actually displaying on your device at any given moment. Each widget class has both a corresponding element class and a method to create an instance. Stateless widget, for example, creates a stateless element. That create element method gets called when the widget is mounted to the tree. Flutter asks the widget for an element. 
and then pops that element onto the element tree with a reference to the widget that created it. Stateful element then says, hey, I wonder if I should have any children and calls the widgets build method. In the case of my app, it gets quite a few. These widgets then create their own elements and they're mounted on the element tree as well. So my app now has two trees, one that represents what's actually on the screen, the elements, and one that holds the blueprints they were made from, the widgets. Now you might be wondering, what starts the process of building and creating elements? What kicks off the whole thing, so to speak? Let me show you something you may not have noticed back at the beginning. The dog app class, which represents my entire app, is itself a stateless widget. I told you widgets can do almost everything, right? If you take a look at main, which is the entry point for the app, you can see it's calling this run app method, and that's the starting point. Run app takes a widget and mounts it as the root element for the app with a height and width constraints that match the size of the screen. Flutter progresses through all the build methods, creating widgets, using them to make elements, and so on until everything's built, mounted on screen, and ready to be laid out and rendered, which is how I got my three little boxes with the names of yellow labs. So that's an intro to composing with stateless widgets and building an interface. One thing we didn't talk about today is how to update or rebuild an interface when data changes. That's because stateless widgets don't really do that. They're stateless, so they can't track data over time or trigger rebuilds on their own. Fortunately, Flutter also has stateful widgets, which we'll tell you all about in the next episode of this series. In the meantime, for more information about Flutter and all of the many widgets, head on to flutter.io.